Hello and welcome to another YouTube video on my channel. Now, don't skip, today we are looking at the last three months updated of my portfolio. We're gonna break it down and see what I'm invested in, how they have changed and what my current total is. Now, this is a road to 100,000 pounds as a challenge to try and build my wealth. We started the last end of 2020 with 25K and we are building and building that wealth slowly through investing and diversifying my portfolio as much as possible. I could always do better, but um, going through different techniques to try and reach 100,000 pounds. Now stay tuned in the video to see what number I'm at, what I'm invested in and what has changed in the last three months. So as you can see on the list next to me, I have got all the investments that I am currently in and the amounts next to them. And as you can see, there's a slight color coding and this is because we have large investments at the top, altcoin investments in green, private shares that I'm a part of in light blue and different bank accounts in red. Uh, betting and everything to do with match betting in brown and extras in black at the bottom and it's slightly tiered towards having the highest at the top and slowly filters down to the lowest investments and accounts that I hold money in. So just to run through them, Seki at the top is basically my trading ISA and it's basically where I'm putting money in every single week into a North America equity index fund and I'm generally dollar cost averaging into that uh, over the long term. Um, if you want to learn more about that, hit me up in the comments and we can do a video that goes a bit deeper on that. My second one is my Fundsmith account. Now, this is another ISA that I used to put money into, but I don't anymore. It's just sat there and um, I'm looking to transfer this over to my primary ISA that I have above it. Uh, but it's just a fund that holds a basket of companies uh, that the uh, hedge fund manager believes in long term and he's got a good track record so I'm having to go with Fundsmith and seeing how it plays out. Next I've got my Lysa, now this is with Moneybox. If you want another video on this I can do a video if you chuck it in the comments um, but this essentially is where I can get more money towards my house deposit whenever I choose to do that. We next have Binance which is for crypto. We next have my SIP, which is a share incentive plan where with my work, I put money in um, pre-tax before I get paid uh, with my income. And then I can get matching shares for putting money in after saying, staying for a certain amount of years. We then have my pension, which I do the same for, but it's towards my uh, retirement when I'm older. And my trading 212 account, which is another ISA that I put money into from a different tax year. We next have KuCoin that has more speculative high risk coins. Now this is sat at £344 and it's dropped quite a bit. And we'll look at the portfolio history and see what's changed uh, next. We've also got Coinbase where I hold AMP3, another crypto coin which has dropped massively and is currently at £98. We've next got my private shares. I bought shares in Plum and shares in Oculus Energy uh, through private funding rounds, so neither of these companies are public. We've then got my bank accounts where I've got all my information there. And finally, my match betting accounts where I've got £500 in betting, a certain amount of my exchange, a certain amount of my affiliate income. And yeah, those are the general investments that I have. We're going to look and see what the total is now for this last month of August. And as you can see, we have hit £75,278.43, which is a real big milestone of mine. And I'm really happy to have finally hit it because I was around 10 grand off three months ago. And the 10 grand to be reaccumulated that quickly is quite insane because the markets have picked up but the crypto has actually dropped off. So it shows that having most of your wealth built away in your stocks is a really good way to keep uh, low risk, but also have some speculative, risky crypto coins, etc., that you can have with a small percentage of your portfolio. So even though I've dropped a lot with crypto, I've still got gains overall. Now, as you can see, I started the year on 61,000 and it dropped a lot in January when stocks and crypto was also hit. So I was at 57,000 on the 31st of January. So from there, it's around an £18,000 increase, which is pretty decent, I'm pretty happy with. But there's a few things that have changed which have made things maybe not been as high progress as they were last year. But we can see my average is around £1,600 being invested every month and adding to the portfolio with the average down here on the bottom right. We've also got an estimate, which is um, trying to take that average and add it onto the final months, which says I'll just go above 80,000 by the end of the year, but we don't know what's gonna happen with the market, so we're not sure. We've got an optimistic goal, which is obviously the 100,000 pounds we're trying to hit. 
and what the overall increase is from the start of the year, which is around £14,000. So that's my history for the year. And the only red months we've had where things have gone down and not up were in January and were in May. But the other months have all gone up because I have been aggressively investing from my income, um, which reflects it here. So if we go over to my portfolio history, this is where I track the history of all of my individual investments. So we've got all of our portfolio valuations here. So I started recording this in the end of um, September in 2021. So that's where it begins up here with a £53,000 portfolio valuation, which was just over a year ago, which is around £22,000 less off. So that's nice to see as an increase. But let's go through some of my investments and talk about how their histories have differed to the other ones. So starting off, my stocks and shares ISA primary has gone up dramatically. And this is because I have started dollar cost averaging around £800 into this every month, so £200 a week. It's a very aggressive investing strategy, but I thought it would push me to try and save as much as possible when I'm investing first and then spending second to see what my limits were. And in this period, I've managed to still go away for a five week trip. And it's been really eye opening that with some savings, I can still hold out this investing. And with a hopeful, hopeful pay rise at some point, we can keep this level of, of investing and maybe even increase it. Um, because I'm not looking to uh, inflate my life with the things that I do. Um, based on my pay, I want to invest more aggressively so that I am building my wealth quicker at a more accelerative pace as opposed to my lifestyle. Um, I was happily spend money on experiences and memories, but spending money on things I'm not as well invested into as some other people. So I'm looking to inflate my wealth and build that so that I am more freer with my finances as opposed to growing my lifestyle inflation because um, I'm not all about buying flashy things and buying expensive cars. Um, I've got a Skoda Fabio 2003 that um, I've had ever since I was 17 that I'm going to continue having until it dies. And then something that gets me from A to B, that's an example of not lifestyle inflating to buy a more expensive and more expensive car because I'm earning more and earning more. We then have my Fundsmith account. Now, as you can see, I've not added any money into this. So this has just been fluctuating based on the markets and is staying around 13 to 16,000 pounds. There's not, not much more to really say about this. It's now at around 14 and a half, which is around the average, um, but it's just a basket of funds. And I'm looking to just leave that in there to see how it turns out in the long term to diversify my portfolio a little bit from not just having American stocks. We've then got my LISA. Now this is with Moneybox where I'm putting 77 pounds away a week into my LISA, which has been tossing up nicely as you can see. I've only started dollar cost averaging though in the last three months, so that's why it's started steadily increasing. Whereas before that, it was sat still because before I put my lump sum away straight away as opposed to doing it weekly. So as you can see, doing it weekly just means it tots up a bit nicer and you get more of an average price of the market. So that's been togged up nicely and hopefully I can use that for a deposit in the next few years whenever I choose to do that. We've next got Binance, which has got my big coin cryptos. And this obviously is extremely volatile, peaking at almost 11 and a half thousand pounds and dipping down to 4K, which is what it currently is around about. That's with crypto. It's a small percentage of my portfolio, but I'm leaving it in there for the long term. And I'm actually currently putting 200 pounds in a month into crypto because it is bottoming out at one point soon. Whether that's at $20,000, $10,000 is the time to be putting money into crypto. So let's see how that changes over the next few months as well. We've then got my share incentive plan. Now this was where I was putting 150 pounds in a month and this has actually gone up to seven and a half thousand pounds because I've received the valuations of my matching shares because the share incentive plan for the year has ended. I still haven't received them, but I need to stay at the company for an X amount of time to receive these shares. But 7.2 thousand pounds based on the private price of the company is why that's that. So that's nice to see as well. My pension's also been tossing up nicely as well, starting at £1,400 around a year ago and now hitting 5000 That over the next few years is just going to slowly tot up and it's really satisfying to see because it comes out of your income pre-tax. 
My trading two on two account as well has just stayed around the same, slightly fluctuating, mainly invested in the S&P 500. Now we've then got KuCoin, which is my more speculative crypto coins. And as you can see, it's now at 300 pounds. So the 1.5 grand that I originally put in has dropped 80%. That just shows what risky crypto stocks can do. But I was willing to risk it and put in some money and lost 1200 pounds from it. But because it was a small percentage of my portfolio, I could handle that. And I'm leaving it in there for the long term to see if anything do do well. Um, but you've got to take part in the game to have a go and you have mistakes and failures. But at the end of the day, it's a learning curve and a learning lesson. Similar with Coinbase, AMP3 has plummeted, so I've lost a high percentage of that as well. Similar story. So my Octopus and Plum shares are still the same. Um, it's a private company and there's not been another finding round where the price has changed. I'm looking for these companies to get bought out or to go public to really make any money on these. So those are long-term plays as well. And then my bank accounts, it's, it's very varied based on my months. My credit card some months has actually been quite uh, over my utilization rate where it should be around 20-25%. So I'm looking at keeping that lower, um, but um, hard to talk about my bank accounts really because they vary with the money that they have in them from month to month. And then we have my betting accounts, my match betting, my exchange has all been uh, fluttering around based on my activity as well, as well as my affiliate income. Um, which has been going up and down based on my activities on social media. And there we have it. That is all of my history of my portfolio, the individual investments and how it has done over the last year. I also had a goal of one of my high motivating goals of hitting £75,000 in my portfolio, which I have now done. So I'm going to cross that off and we can move on to the £100,000 goal. So that is something ticked off, which I'm really happy about. And there we go, that is that ticked off and we can now look to completing the £100,000 portfolio goal, which is really satisfying to tick off. So there we have it, that is my portfolio breakdown for the months of June, July and August. The last three months update, we've gone up around £5,000. We've hit the £75,000 mark, which I'm really happy about. And we're gonna move on to try and get that £100,000 goal. Now, as I always say, this is not a brag. I'm just showing you the opportunities of things you can invest in to help build your wealth like I am trying to do. But if you found the video interesting at all, please hit the like and subscribe button if you can leave any comments down below about any of these investments that you're also doing or any you recommend, then please hit up the comments and let's have a chat and a discussion. But without further ado, that is the end of the video and I hope you have enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.